we had started looking at the notion of asymptotes uh, for a function of one variable. So, we defined the notion of what are called uh, horizontal asymptote, the notion of vertical asymptote and the notion of uh, uh, oblique asymptotes. So, let us look at uh, some examples of uh, uh, this. So, let us look um, let us look at the function f of x is equal to x divided by x minus 1 for x not equal to 1 because in the domain of the function uh, is not f 1 is not included right. So, uh, clearly as x approaches uh, the value 1 from the left or from the right either way right then this, di this difference x minus 1 becomes if x is bigger than 1 and approaches 1 then this becomes positive and very very small. So, this will go to plus infinity and if x is approaching from the left side uh, of minus 1 then uh, this value uh, will become negative and very very small. So, this uh, quotient will go to minus infinity that means what this will become uh, very very small but a, a very very large and a negative number. Okay. So, we write this as limit x going to 1 plus that means from the right side of 1 is equal to plus infinity and limit of x going to 1 from the left side is equal to minus infinity. So, that means what? So, in our language x is equal to 1 is a vertical asymptote because what is happening? The value y is becoming plus infinity or minus infinity is not becoming equal to it is tending to plus infinity and the minus infinity when x is approaching the value 1 either from the left or from the right. So, x is equal to 1 is the line x is equal to 1 is a vertical line. So, that is an asymptote for the uh, function from the left as well as from the right. So, one can uh, also uh, if you look at uh, uh, f of x minus 1 okay, then it is equal to 1 over x minus 1 that goes to 0 as x goes to plus infinity and similarly it goes to 0 if x goes to minus infinity. So, what does that mean? That means as x goes to plus infinity or x goes to minus infinity y uh, is becoming 0. So, that means what? That means the line y equal to 0 that is uh, the x axis is a uh, horizontal asymptote for uh, uh, oh, this is minus 1 sorry. Uh, not uh, equal to 0 f x minus 1 that is going to 0 that means f x is approaching the value 1 from the left as well as from the right. So, y equal to 1 uh, or one could have written that this limit uh, is equal to uh, okay. So, this is a slight uh, um, typo here uh, see f x minus 1 is 1 over x minus 1. So, it is the limit of this. So, limit of this is equal to limit of this which is equal to 0 and similarly limit of f x minus 1 is same as limit of 1 over x minus 1 and that is equal to 0. So, y equal to 1 is a uh, horizontal asymptote from the left as well as from the right. So, uh, we can uh, look at uh, this function slightly more uh, uh, explicitly that if you look at the derivative of this function. Okay, so, that is minus 1 by uh, 1 over x minus 1 whole square which is less than 0. So, that means what? That means f is strictly decreasing in the interval minus infinity to 1 and 1 to infinity. And similarly, if you look at the second derivative of this, then this comes out to be this quantity. Uh, you should check that second derivative comes out this. So, which is less than uh, 0 for x less than 1, right? So, implying it is strictly concave downward in the interval minus 1 to 1 because the nature of the second derivative gives you concavity or convexity. And uh, for x bigger than 1 this will be positive. So, it is concave upward in that inverse. So, this uh, data uh, can be all combined together to uh, plot a graph of the function. So, this is the graph of the function we saw right that uh, there is a this line is not uh, plotted here it should have been a line here that is x is equal to uh, minus 1 <coughs> is a line which is a vertical asymptote and as you approach plus infinity or minus uh, infinity right. So, that is uh, the looking at that. So, uh, 
for uh, this is concave up in the portion less than minus 1 and uh, uh, bigger than minus 1 it is concave uh, down. So, this is the graph of the function. Let us look at uh, uh, we defined the horizontal asymptotes, we defined the vertical asymptotes. Uh, there could be a, a line which is not either horizontal or vertical, but the function may be approaching that value as you approach uh, uh, x becomes plus infinity or minus infinity. So, we define what is called a oblique asymptote. So, a line y is equal to a x plus b right, is called a oblique asymptote to the graph of the function that is y equal to f of x. If you subtract f x minus a x plus b and x goes to infinity and that is equal to 0. This is what we actually did in the previous example also. We had instead of this we had the vertical uh, line where it was uh, equal to 1. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, let us uh, look at what is called oblique asymptote. So, y equal to a x plus b is called oblique asymptote. If the difference between f x and that line goes to 0 as x goes to plus infinity. So, that is same as saying that the graph f x approaches the line y equal to a x plus b as x approaches plus infinity. So, this is from the left and similarly you can have uh, from the right uh, if uh, x going to minus infinity that goes to 0. So, that is only a way of saying which direction you are approaching. So, from the left or from the right, but the function is approaching uh, the line a x plus b. So, that is what is called oblique asymptote as x approaches minus infinity. So, uh, uh, basic idea is you are approaching some value or some uh, line as you approach uh, plus infinity or minus infinity. So, the difference becomes smaller distance between them. So, approach is uh, plus infinity or minus infinity accordingly. So, these are called oblique asymptotes. Uh, I think the best is to look at some examples to illustrate this. So, let us look at an example of a function f of x which is x square minus 1 divided by 2 x plus 4 of course, 2 x plus 4 should not be equal to 0. So, let us look at the domain when x is strictly bigger than minus 2. So, the no problem comes. So, in this domain, let us uh, write this function as uh, uh, by using a bit of algebra, we can divide x square minus 1 by this actually and you can write it as x by 2 minus 1 plus 3 divided by 2 x plus 4. This is like something like um, a division of numbers. So, this is the uh, value the quotient plus uh, um, the remainder kind of thing. So, uh, this is what you can write this expression as this. So, now if you subtract f x minus x by 2 minus 1 then the value is 3 divided by 2 x plus 4. So, as you approach plus infinity or minus infinity this value will go to 0. So, that will mean that the line y equal to x by 2 minus 1 is a uh, oblique asymptote for the graph of the function. So, that is what we write here the limit of this uh, or the limit of this minus right. So, this minus this that is limit of this quantity is equal to 0 as x goes to plus infinity or minus infinity. That means, the line y equal to x by 2 is an oblique asymptote uh, to the f x for both from left and right because either way is okay if you take go to infinity from the left or from the right. Uh, moreover, as x goes to minus 2 this uh, becomes 0 because as you approach this becomes smaller and smaller. So, this becomes 0. So, this limit is 0. So, x is equal to minus 2 is a vertical asymptote. X equal to minus 2. So, as you approach the value x is equal to minus 2, your function becomes 0. right? So, x is equal to minus 2 is a vertical asymptote both from left and from the right. One can also look at the derivative of this function to analyze whether it is increasing or decreasing and what are the critical points. So, this is a function of the type p by q, a numerator and denominator, one function on the top, one function at the bottom. So, you can find out the first derivative. So, first derivative f dash of x will be equal to 
uh, by the quotient rule 2x to the power 2x plus 4 to the power 2 2x plus 4 into derivative of x square plus minus 1 so that is 2x minus x square minus 1 into derivative of the other function so that is equal to 2 2x plus 4 derivative is 2. So, this when you simplify comes out to be 2 into x plus 2 into x uh, plus 1. So, that gives you um, if you want to find the critical points that gives you uh, this is equal to 0 that means x is equal to minus 2 and x is equal to minus 1 are the critical points uh, for this function. One has to now analyze whether these critical points are local maxima or local minima. One can apply uh, um, one can apply uh, first derivative test, second derivative test at x is equal to 1 and x equal to minus 2 and x equal to minus 1 to check that the point uh, x is equal to minus 2 is a point of local maxima and minus 1 is a point of local uh, minima. So, uh, this uh, in this picture the bottom part of the graph is not visible, it is only the part in this. So, x is equal to 2, uh, x is equal to minus 2 is a vertical asymptote, this is a oblique asymptote and this is one part of the graph where x is bigger than minus 2. For x less than minus 2 there will be a bottom portion which will be something similar to this, but it will be coming on the other way around. So, uh, that is what uh, the graph of the function uh, looks like. So, this is how uh, asymptotes are used uh, to um, find the graph. Uh, I would like to summarize uh, this tools of calculus uh, in sketching the graphs of a function. What are all the points one should keep in mind to sketch the graph of a function? So, first of all given uh, a function one can look for some kind of symmetries in the graph of the function. So, what does symmetries mean? For example, a function is symmetric with respect to y axis. That means, for a point on the left or right of the y axis, if you take x or take minus x, the values at both the points are same. So, this is symmetry with respect to y axis of the, so the such a function is also given a name, such functions are normally called even functions. So, what is the advantage of this kind of uh, knowing that the function is symmetric with respect to y axis? The idea is that if you know on one side of y axis the graph, on the other side it is just the reflection of the graph along the y axis as if y axis is the mirror and you can have the image uh, of the graph from the left to the right or right to the left whichever way you like. So, you have to draw the graph only on one side of uh, the axis, positive axis or the negative axis. So, that is what is called symmetry. So, one needs to draw the graph only for x bigger than or equal to 0 say and reflect the graph uh, about y axis to get the graph on the negative side. So, that is what is called symmetry. So, for example, you look at the function f of x is equal to x square, right? it is symmetric around the y axis. f of x, if we change x to minus x, f of x remains the same equal to x square, the value x square remains the same. So, if you know the graph on the positive side, on the negative side it is just reflection of this. So, that will give you the graph over the whole of uh, the x axis. So, you need to draw only on one side that is the positive side of the, um, the x axis or negative side. So, there is symmetry around y axis which is important, it reduces the work in sketching the graph of the function. Another point in the curve sketching is knowing that f of x is called symmetric with respect to origin if f of minus x is equal to minus of f of x. This is again a property of the function that at a point if you take the value and you change x to minus x, then the value changes by minus of the value of f of x. This is called symmetric with respect to origin or one also calls this as the odd function. So, earlier we had the notion of even function and this is what is called the odd function. So, for such a function again one need to draw the graph only on one side, on the other side you first reflect along y axis and then reflect along x axis. So, you have to do it twice, so, reflecting at both axes will give you the graph on the other side. So, uh, for example, if you look at uh, 2x cube minus x, this is symmetric around the region because if you change x to minus x, 
so 2 x cube gives you minus of x cube if you change x to minus x and this gives you plus that is minus of minus. So, that is minus of over x. So, if you know the graph on the positive side to get the graph on the other side what you have to do is you first reflect it. So, you will get a graph like this and then you reflect it down uh, around x axis you will get this part. So, this is the graph of the function if you know on the positive side you know it on the whole of x axis. So, uh, this is also a useful concept uh, even and odd functions. Next is what is called the intercepts. So, where does the graph cut y axis and x axis? So, if y equal to f x is a function say that f of x is equal to 0, what is f of x that is y. So, y equal to 0, I call the zeros of the um, zeros of the function are called the x intercepts. So, those values which give you 0 right y becomes 0 that means points on the x axis through which the graph of the function has to cross. So, that is what you call the x intercepts. Uh, so, point x comma 0 will lie on the graph for all values of x for which this, this is true. And uh, you can also have uh, the intercept on the y axis that means on the y axis x is equal to 0. So, if you put x is equal to 0 or and compute the value y that gives you the y intercept. So, the graph will pass through the point 0 comma f of 0 that is a point on the graph of the function uh, which cuts the y axis at the point f of 0. So, that is a, so you get uh, points through which the graph should pass. Uh, can have more than uh, the function can have more than x intercept, but it will have only one y intercept because it is a function. So, a function crosses y axis only at one point at the most, it cannot cross at more than one point because it is a function but it can cross x axis at more than one point. So, uh, example for example, 2 x minus uh, 2 x cube minus 3 uh, minus x you put it equal to 0. So, you get x into uh, 2 x square minus 1. So, x is equal to 0 and x is equal to plus minus 1 over square root 2 are the values. So, the graph passes through the points 0 comma 0 plus 1 over square root 2 comma 0 and minus 1 over 2 square root comma 0. The y intercept uh, you can the y intercept is y equal to 0 because when you put x is equal to 0 you get y equal to 0. So, it passes through the point 0 0. So, these are the points through which uh, the function has to pass. There is something called periodicity which is useful uh, once you come across what are called trigonometric functions but uh, in any case let us define it. Periodicity means that there is a certain number p say the value of x plus p is equal to x for all points x in the domain of the function p is fixed. So, uh, in a sense that if you take uh, the graph of the function in some uh, interval uh, say 0 to p then you can go on repeating that interval uh, uh, graph again and again to get the uh, graph everywhere. So, this is what is called the periodic function and then p is called the period periodicity of the uh, function. So, one has to know the graph of the function in any interval of length p and everywhere else it will be just a reproduction of that function again and translated next. So, for example, uh, uh, if this is the graph then in the next portion you just that portion is put here, that portion is put here, that portion is put here and so on. So, um, you go, graph is repeated in every interval of length p. So, that is periodicity. Uh, so, what are the, uh, so these are the important things which one should keep in mind along with other calculus things that we have done. So, let us summarize all these things uh, to draw the graph of a function. So, one should locate what is x intercept, what is y intercept, look for symmetry, is there any symmetry, is a odd function or a even function. And look for periodicity, is there any periodicity in the function, look for uh, continuity whether the graph is continuous everywhere, are there any points where the function is discontinuous, what are discontinuities, what type of discontinuities are there and so on. Then look at differentiability, whether the function has de derivative everywhere, what is the nature of the first derivative, what is what are the points where the first derivative is equal to 0, critical points first derivative positive or negative it gives you increasing decreasing nature of the second derivative will give you 
concave up, concave down and points of inflection. So, locate into those intervals where the first derivative is positive or negative increase decrease, critical points where derivative is equal to 0, second derivative will give you locate, uh, first derivative can help you to locate whether the points of extrema are local maxima or local minima and so on and uh, the nature of the second derivative will give you whether the function is convex or concave, what are the intervals of convexity and concavity and what are points of inflection. So, all this data and along with uh, you can look at what happens to the value of the function as x goes to plus infinity or minus infinity. You can also try to analyze horizontal asymptotes uh, and um, this is this is what what will give you a vertical asymptote. This will give you uh, uh, equal to plus infinity minus infinity. This is the nature of the function as x goes to plus infinity or minus infinity. If it happens to be going to plus infinity minus infinity as x goes to plus or uh, this goes to 0. So, the vertical asymptotes uh, will be there and um, oblique asymptotes uh, you should find and use all the above data to uh, sketch the graph of a function. So, let us uh, do one exercise. Let us look at a function y equal to f of x which has the following properties that f of x is equal to 0 for uh, x is equal to minus 2 and x is equal to minus 1. That means, minus 2 comma 0 and minus 1 comma 0 are the points where which the graph will pass. Y intercept is plus 2 that means, the graph will pass through the point 0 comma plus 2. F is twice differentiable uh, with first derivative with this property f dash of x is bigger than 0 for x less than 1 and uh, for x bigger than 1. x less than minus 1 and f is bigger than plus 1, it is positive. That means, in this portion the function is going to be increasing and uh, in minus 1 to 1 the function derivative is less than 0. So, it will be uh, decreasing. The second derivative uh, is given as uh, less than 0. Uh, at minus 1 is less than 0, bigger than 0 and uh, f of 1 and so on. So, this data is all uh, given to us. Uh, so, from this data what do you get? Uh, we also are given the fact that second derivative is less than 0 for x less than 0 and second derivative is bigger than uh, in the previous so this that we did not. Uh, so, f double dash at minus 1 is less than 0 and f double dash 1 was uh, not given to be equal to 0, but uh, that uh, uh, indicates uh, that at the point minus 1, say it is decreasing, it is increasing, it is differentiable. So, that means derivative at this point must be equal to 0, at minus 1 must be 0. So, that will tell you that uh, minus 1 is a point of local maximum, plus 1 is a point of local uh, minimum. Uh, and these are the values at those points. And the nature of the second derivative uh, gives us the, whether the function is concave up or concave down. So, it says for uh, x less than 0, it is given that the function is uh, second derivative is less than 0. That means, the function is concave down and the concave up for x bigger than 0. And it says x goes to plus infinity, the function goes to plus infinity and x goes to minus infinity, the function goes to minus infinity. So, all this data uh, we want to sketch the graph of the function. So, let us sketch the graph uh, of the function from this data. So, graph is smooth because y is continuously differentiable, it is continuous, it passes through these points that is what we observed and then it has a local maximum at the point minus 1 it has a local minimum at the point x is equal to 0. Further, it is strictly concave down in minus infinity to 0 and it is strictly concave up in 0 to infinity with a point of inflection at the point x is equal to 0. It has no asymptotes. It keeps on increasing or keeps on decreasing. So, f is decreases to minus infinity as x goes to minus in plus infinity and it uh, increases to plus infinity as x goes to plus infinity. This should be minus infinity here. So, all this data 
we can now plot a picture of the function. So, the picture of the function is given as follows. So, this should be the graph of the function. So, here is uh, the point 1 which is a local minimum, here is a point which is a local uh, maximum uh, for the function, it passes to the point minus 2 0, it passes to the point 1 0, keeps on increasing, keeps on increasing as you go to the right side plus infinity, keeps on decreasing as you go to minus infinity. And uh, in the portion uh, minus 2 to 0, it is concave uh, down, in this portion it is concave up. So, uh, this is what uh, how you sketch the graph of a function. So, um, till now what we have been doing is we have been looking at function of one variable, looking at the various tools of calculus that help us to analyze the function and apply it to uh, scenario of uh, our economics, commerce and management. Um, we will start looking at uh, in the coming uh, few lectures, we will look at functions of several variables, functions of uh, two variables uh, and see similar analysis for functions of two variables. Because in many problems in economics, uh, the outcome depends on not only on one variable, but more than one variable. So, we will look at these uh, functions of several variables and these applications in the next uh, lectures. Thank you.